be saw tonight someday. Determination, hard work, big heart. That can't be measured. It's going to get more difficult every single year. And I think the general consensus from the public is, okay, JB is going to go on, he's going to make another Olympic team, and he's going to try to redeem himself from Rio. But it's never easy. And these guys are extremely tough. And I could see it in Isaiah's eyes. I could hear by the way he talked throughout the season and watch the progressions that he made from beginning of the summer. He couldn't even get to my legs to the end of the summer. He was taking me down. And so I knew it was going to be difficult today, but I never want to drop a match, particularly at home. But I think that these valleys are what you can climb yourself out of. And I think ultimately that's going to determine my legacy. More than the victories, it's going to be how I won. And that right there is pure heart. And anyone that could see it late in that match, just headbutting, hand fighting, that's his MO. He's the tough guy, but I'm pretty damn tough as well. How much tougher is as you're getting older? Are you wrestling father time in a sense, Jordan? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, it's not even really father time. It's father hunger, father complacency, father motivation. I think it's the more difficult aspect of it because it's harder to spend time on the road. When I was young and single, I could leave for weeks at a time, go train, spend a bunch of time in different countries, and it meant nothing to me. But I wanted to be the best wrestler in the world, but now I've got other factors outside of wrestling that are extremely important to me, more important than wrestling. My family is number one over wrestling, and I think uh, that it gets more difficult in a sense. But I represent fathers everywhere, and I want to be that embodiment of, hey, listen, you can be driven and be a good dad at home. And I think that I balance that line very well. There are not a lot of people doing what I'm doing that have two kids at home, you know? Jordan, worst weight cut of your life? No. Yeah? No. Actually, it wasn't. So, man, it, it's crazy. There's discrepancies in the scales all around this place. I was, I worked out hard. I was actually two pounds under this morning after my workout. And so I drank a little bit. And on all the scales, I was under 73.8, 73.9, 74.0. And then I come down on this scale and it was flickering, right? And so I think particularly flow, and this is no offense to you guys, but we have to make sure that the check scale and the official scale are calibrated well. Um, but I think it was just a mishap. And obviously, you know, the discipline that I have, the cool thing about it is throughout the day, I had a videographer with me watching my progression, watching me get off of the bike, watching me get out of the wrestling mat, watching me put my single on, step on the scale upstairs and be under. So listen, if anyone wants to combat it, I'm more than welcome to fight it because I know I was underweight. What's it like this being your last time probably wrestling in this venue? Um, it was great. It was great. And I think that I put on a show. It reminds me a lot of the match that I wrestled against Kyle Dake back in 2017. Those matches really determine your legacy. I was within an inch of not going to Paris and then I became a world champion. Same thing today, I was within six minutes of not being on the world team again and now I'm going to Kazakhstan with an opportunity to tie John. And the margin of error becomes smaller as you get older. But I think that, listen, I, I'm, I'm tough, I'm tough. I'm thankful, I'm blessed, I've got a great team. Coach Manny was pouring into me, you've done it before. You've done this before. We've been here two years ago. You're the toughest guy in the entire world. If it, he wants to make it a fight, you make it a fight. And I've never lost a fight. Never have I made a street fight out there on the mat and gotten beaten because of it. So that is where my strength lies. My technique is solid. My conditioning is always superb. But my heart is bigger than any man that walks this planet. Jordan, several of these wrestlers, the, the most successful world champs, Jade and Green, have talked about maybe not getting enough respect anymore, that people are too ready to look forward to the next generation. Yeah. Is that what's happening? Do you feel that yourself? No, I don't. I think where I am at in my career, I mean, Imar's beloved. He's a great kid, but he's not Bo Nickel, right? He's not David Taylor. He's not Kyle Dake. These guys, when they're coming out of college, they're fan favorites essentially American heroes at very young ages. And people want to see those guys make teams and see what they can do on the world level. So yes, I think Jaden is overlooked because of the fact that he is in a weight class with a superstar. But anyone who really knows the sport and knows wrestling is not just a casual wrestling fan, understands how tough he is, except Nomad. Because <laughs> I think Nomad said that Bo Nickel could win. But really, it's I, I was in that place. 
for a long period of time. I remember in Madison, Wisconsin, 2015, when I beat Kyle Day, and I tweeted afterwards. I was pissed mm -hmm. because I was like, damn, all these people want him to beat me. Mm -hmm. What have I done wrong? I've made all these teams. I've won all these medals. I've been the best representative and ambassador of the sport. But you're not going to be everyone's favorite. That's just the bottom line. Have and you told Jaden that? I have, but he's young, and he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and it's very difficult for him to understand it in the present because there are a lot of external factors where there's the trolls on social media, the constant tweeting, blogging, um, whiteboard wars, all these things that make it difficult for an individual to stay focused on what they have to do. And so I eliminated all of it. I don't read the comments on my Instagram page. I don't go to the, the mat.com forums. I don't read what anyone says about me. Only I can determine who I am and where my identity lies. And I think that as Jaden gets older, he'll get to that place and he'll gain a little more perspective. But I love Jaden and he's a great kid. And the sad part about it is he's so happy-go-lucky. And I remember sitting here back in, was it either 2016 when he made the Olympic team or when he beat David on a bum knee, he was like, this is fun for me, right? He was like, this is a game and I love this. And he's getting away from that. Now he's combative with the fan base. He's like, I'm remembering this guy. I'm saving this tweet, right? I'm gonna get back at this dude. And so I wanna see him go back to that place with freedom where he's enjoying the sport, not because of what anyone says about him, but just because he started at six years old and he's always loved it. Are you in a place of freedom? Are you enjoying the sport right now? I am, but it's freaking hard to enjoy, bro. Like, I enjoy that. That third match is, that's, that's what I enjoy. I enjoy the battle of wills, but it's hard. Like, I've always been a guy that I wanna make it fun, but damn, it's hard because it's, it's such a war out there. And I want to wrestle with freedom. I feel like I'm a, best, a better wrestler in the wrestling room. And I hear this echo throughout the entire Team USA lineup. But the cool thing about it is now I'm teammates with guys that I watch grow up. I watched Dayton Fix as a kid. I tried to recruit him here to Nebraska. I remember meeting him when he was 12 years old and now we're teammates. Uh, and it's a beautiful thing. And so, like we stated yesterday at the press conference, I was the guy that was here from the start, and now I'm becoming teammates with guys that will run up to me and they'll be like, hey, you remember we took this picture together back in 2011? And they'll be like eight years old. And now we're teammates together. Uh, so it's uh, it's pretty cool, and I'm, I'm in a good place. We're gonna have to rename the uh, Gable Rap the Burroughs Rap soon? The, yeah, this is the first time I lost with the, with the Gable Rap. I've never lost with the Rap until today um, I was actually considered taking it off between matches but yeah this is definitely if you're in this era but I never want to be that guy Gable is a legend he's an icon in the sport let him have it I got a couple other signature things that are, are my thing a lot of sock pulls today a lot of sock pulls well sh I had to go get a bunch late you know what I mean that first match I had to get one second match the fingers stopped me the fingers right when he had to reset with 13 seconds left when I can just unleash a barrage of shots, I'm hard to stop. I'd rather be on offense late than on defense late because offensively, you're like, I gotta shoot, I got no choice. Defensively, you're like, should I shoot? Should I try to counter? Do I just defend? So he had a lot to think about, but golly, he's a respectable individual and I cannot say one bad thing about him and he's gonna help elevate me. I ain't wrestling with him anymore. Let's put it that way. We ain't doing any more simulation matches, any more training together. Because he's like, listen, thank you, and I'll see you next year, is what he said to me at the end of the match. And he ain't, he's not kidding, right? He's going to try to be there. My job is to go win a medal and get to the finals. Since 2011, there hasn't been a time that we haven't wanted to hear what you have to say. Do you enjoy that process? I do. My wife says I overshare a lot. She says I talk too much, but I think I was groomed into this. When I first made the team back in 2011, go check out my interviews. I was not nearly as eloquent and I couldn't express my ideas as fluidly. But I think now, just from so many interviews, being ambassador and being able to navigate rooms to network and raise money for USA Wrestling, I've become who I am today. And it's a blessing. The hard part about it is I go back to Jersey, people are like, who is this guy, right? You're all educated now, you're talking extremely proper. When I left home back in Jersey, I talked with slang, and I don't wanna say Ebonics, but I just, I wasn't from the streets but I dwelled in that place where we just talk that way. And so now, in the avenues that I'm going and the people that I'm maneuvering around, I gotta be able to, to switch lanes occasionally. But why'd I do you, enjoy this. Why'd you wear different shoes in that third match? 
Well, no, I had these shoes on in my second match. Second, so I wore okay. gold the first, blue the second, and then the third, I'm like, all right, enough with this finesse looking good for the people at home so they can get excited about the JB Ford. Just go out there and win. Make the world team and then tweet them a couple days from now. Uh, at some point, I think it was when Dake announced that he was accepting the bid 79, he yeah. said, man, I'm upset because every time I've wrestled him, I've won a world title. Yeah, yeah. I want to be challenged. Has I ever challenged you enough to win a world title this year? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think so. Really, the ultimate determination for me is can I wrestle the way I want to wrestle with freedom? I got to wrestle with freedom. And until I can get to that point, I'm always going to be at risk to get beat. The matches that I get beat is when I allow guys to slow me down and dictate the pace of the match. And I think ultimately, in order for me to be at my best, I've got to wrestle hard, I've got to take a lot of shots, I've got to fake a lot. It takes a ton of effort to do that. But I have a fifth gear that very few men can rival. And it doesn't matter if it's Sitikoff or the Georgian or Chamiso. I think when I get going, I'm difficult to stop. Question is, can I do that for six minutes and am I willing to do it for six minutes? I'm not sure if the JB we saw tonight could beat Sitikoff, but it doesn't matter because we're going to see him in September. How, many, um, how far do you need to go to get to that point? Well, I got a lot of wrestling to do. I'm going to Yasargo Dogu. I'm going to the Pan Am Games. So I'm going to have to beat probably Igor. I'm going to have to beat Demiridis. I'm going to have to beat Chumiso again. I'm going to have to probably beat Franklin Gomez again. And so just that weathering the storm and that refinement is going to put me in a place where I want to be. Listen, I've had bad performances and still got it done. Imar wrestled his absolute best and he still couldn't beat me enough to make the team. And after today, thinking about it, no man has ever beaten me twice. I have no, I have two losses to no man on this planet. So think about that for a second. No man. I don't plan on it. Going back to, uh, to fatherhood, did you kind of give any advice to Green, kind of how to balance the act? Uh, he's done a great job. He's done a great job. I think he's relatively quiet, but him and I have become closer over the last year. And I think fatherhood has given us an extra line of connection and he's an extremely blessed man. He's happy and he was just walking with a swagger this weekend because his baby girl was born and it was cool to see like even at the press conference yesterday, he didn't talk much, he's usually super quiet and he talked a lot and he was extremely happy and you could just tell there was something different about him. I like to see that. Because you two are always kind of compared here in Nebraska, right? You know? Yeah, for sure. Well, um, he's, he solidified himself as a, a legend in the sport regardless. As long as the 70 kilogram weight class has been created, he's been the representative for America. It's, it's uh, he's an amazing wrestler, he's an amazing man. I think he's gonna be a great dad, and I know he's gonna be a great dad, and uh, I'm looking forward to watching the way his life progresses. How much of a leadership role do you play on Team USA? Uh, I try to be, I try to always lead by example, but we got guys that are really good on our squad now, um, like Kyle Snyder and Jaden Cox and Kyle Dake potentially. Um, we'll see how things shake out as we still try to assemble the rest of the team. But I think we've got a great team right now. We've got some new entries, Tyler Graff, Pat Downey, and guys that are unfamiliar with the world stage. But I think that we have enough firepower from the guys that have been proven to go out there and weather the storm that the Russians and Azerbaijanis are gonna bring to the table. So we'll see. I think um, I always try to be a leader. I'm not extremely vocal. But I think that I live my lifestyle the right way and people feed off of that energy that I bring to the room every single day. Um, but that's the one thing, I, I never wanna show weakness within my thought process. And regardless of how my competitions go, if you see me train, if you've been in the room with me, you know what I represent, you know who I am. I'm a man of character and integrity and no one could ever question that. You can question my ability at this age, but you can never question my work ethic and my heart. And that's something that I stand strongly to. Um, and so it's like, there's a verse in the Bible that says, although our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed each day. And so for me, like my spirit is always continuously developing, regardless of how old I become and how hard it is to make weight or how much time I have to spend on the road. You can't, you can't determine the amount of heart that a man has and his willpower. And that's where I'm really strong. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You.